want to know which White House staffer or DNC intern saw Biden's tanking poll numbers and thought, aha, I know who can save him. Let's resurrect Christine Blasey Ford. You know, the Me Too lady who falsely accused Supreme Court Justice Brett Kavanaugh during his confirmation proceedings of attempted rape at a house party decades ago. Even though she couldn't remember any exact details, even the date or location of the supposed attack, she had no eyewitness testimony to back up her claims. She had no proof that she's ever even met Kavanaugh, and her own father didn't believe her. Plus, one of her good childhood friends later admitted to the FBI that she felt pressured into changing her story and lying in order to hurt Kavanaugh once Ford pointed to her as the one to drive her home after the alleged assault. The motivating factor here, even someone admitted to by Ford's own lawyer, was their fear of Kavanaugh helping President Trump to make good on his promise to see Roe overturned. And as we know with this election cycle, with Biden literally running on the motto to restore Roe, Democrats think this could be a winning strategy come November. And so we get treated to Christine Blasey Ford not only coming into fashion again, into vogue, with her new memoir coming out and a glowing write-up about it published at The Atlantic, but... Now she's appearing on The View to boot. Lucky us, watch. Well, you've been called um, a highly credible witness uh, and you're a, you have a PhD in psychology, you're a professor, you teach at Palo Alto and Stanford universities. But even today, some people remain skeptical of your story. And you write that during the hearing, Senator Lindsey Graham wouldn't even make eye contact with you. Were you prepared for that kind of response? I was prepared ahead of time that, they, that none of the Republicans were going to speak with me and they were going to use an outside interviewer. Mm -hmm. And so I was actually surprised at how kind some of the other Republican senators were who broke that protocol and said hello. Who um, was that? Can you name a good one? Um, Senator Flake and Senator Sass both came They're, over and neither said Neither one's gone in Congress anymore, yeah. right? Yeah. Yeah. But, but still, a but credit. Still, yeah, yeah, yeah credit. It's good for them. Both good men. Yeah. Who's calling her a credible witness? And it's not just the White House staffers or DNC interns that I have a bone to pick with, but it's also whoever is running things over the New York Times. I mean, I'm glad that they're coming clean with this, but it's also a little disconcerting. Their opinion side is running a video titled, It Turns Out the Deep State is Actually Kind of Awesome. Joining us now to discuss is scholar, speaker, and author, Dr. Steve Turley. Dr. Turley, thanks for being here tonight. Oh, thanks, Kara. It's a pleasure as always. You know, so the, the deep state isn't real, they say, because President Trump is an evil liar who wants to overturn our democracy and create a new authoritarian state. But also the deep state is real and it's totally awesome. So what in the world's going on here, Steve? Why can't the left keep its story straight on this? Yeah, it is. Uh, well, it's because it's uh, every, truth has been partisanized. I mean, we're seeing that even with Christine Ford. Um, Christine Ford, as you rightly pointed out, doesn't even have evidence that she's ever even been in the within a semblance of proximity uh, with uh, with Kavanaugh. And then you have Tara Reid, who, of course, was interning uh, for Biden in 1992 and 93, if I recall, fully within proximity of him. She makes similar claims. And of course, she can't be believed. So the, the, the difference isn't the claim. The difference is the partisan uh, side from which the claim is made. Um, obviously, it's the same thing with the deep state. So one day there is no deep state uh, because that's just a bunch of conspiracy nonsense. On another day, well, yeah, the deep state, it's great. Um, and there's nothing to fear. That's uh, It's benign. It's working for the benefit of, of average citizens. Um, obviously, we know there is a deep state, uh, largely thanks to the Twitter files um, during the 2016 campaign. There did emerge a public-private partnership between our national security agencies in D.C., uh, together with uh, big tech and other favored corporations, and they formed a, a corporate state hybrid that largely bypassed uh, constitutional restraints that we were told such a hybrid was supposedly uh, protecting. But that uh, public-private partnership um, worked in such a way where corporate boardrooms did what politicians could not do because they were restrained by the will of the voters. And those corporate boardrooms um, ended up uh, maximizing centralized control over the totality of political and economic life. And, you know, I think the legacy media is so pernicious in that they continue to cloak themselves behind the veneer of scientific objectivity.